Thank you guys for joining us. Simon Parks and Nick Sylvester. Um, we've been trying to put this interview together for a while now. Schedule Nick's nine hours uh, behind myself, eight hours behind Simon. But a lot of the topics I cover with um, Nick, Simon, we also talk about. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to put you two guys together to record it. I'm in the middle of something else. Um, my schedule is a bit conflicting, but rather than delay this anymore, I think it's important that we document and again, share information between you two. And I'll come back in when I get off the other interview and um, see how you guys are getting along. Um, Nick, Simon, Simon, Nick. <laughs> Mahoney, oh. before, yeah. before you run off and play dad, my friend, yeah. I want to thank you very much. You're a very good friend everything you do and uh, i just wanted to say that first oh mate absolutely me. you're very welcome the information that you share you know when you were talking about the dog men nick that that one went crazy people were really interested in that so it'd be interesting to see if simon knows anything about this if he can talk about it and i'll pre-warn you simon will just say no and he'll move on so don't badger him if he says no don't badger Look, him. <laughs> I, I i know simon probably as well as, as anybody. Uh, I've watched everything he's ever done, uh, virtually every video he's ever recorded, short of a few of the, the gold busters. I have to admit, didn't watch all of those, but but seriously, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with his, uh, his uh, etiquette, so to speak. Well, I'll come back in about 30, 40 minutes. I'll join you for the last 15, 20 minutes. Crack on, guys. And um, I'm going to keep the volume on so I can hear it because I the other stuff I've got to do, I just have to be listening. It's not... Um, it's nothing too important, but I, I can't, I've got to show my face. Okay. So guys, enjoy. I'll be back. Right. Thanks. Buddy. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Well, Nick, uh, lovely. Um, why then do you think it's taken us so long to get together? If you've been, you know, watching me for a while. Why? Well, you don't do us. You don't do a whole lot of shows with other humans, Simon. <clears throat> I mean, you, you, you know, you, you carry on with, uh, those across the pond, you know, Charlie and, and Mahoney, but I don't know. I, I truly don't know. I haven't bothered Mahoney about it, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I've been wanting to get on with you, but, you know, it's just one of those things. I, I like I like when things happen organically. Yeah, I, th I think also because I'm not an American, I think it's very difficult for a, a non-American to break in. Um, and I've not tried to do so. And because of, you know, connecting consciousness and our own organization, that has taken the time. And since I've been um, contractually obliged to the White Hats, I'll just call it that, uh, I've changed what I've been um, engaging with the public on. And when, you know, the situation is resolved, I will go back to what I call my core topics. But at the moment, the White Hats are quite clear that the agenda that they're looking for uh is more to do with the politics it's more to do with the sovereignty of, of humanity and less to do with flying saucers and little green men however i have been assured that when certain things are in place that is a topic they will officially uh, open up well fair enough and you know you and i <laughs> both know pretty well that that in between those those bits uh, lies spirituality and it, it 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 flows in between throughout each um and, and that's sort of what this really is about so we might as well dive right in right um speaking on that so so let's talk about this simon let let's talk about the white hats for a second in regards to you know what it is they're they're pushing so to speak and what it is they don't necessarily like there are definitely two schools of of of, of teaching that, that the truthers are involved in there's the ones that teach the movie okay that teach you know everything's going on right here right now um you know the, there really is a a war in ukraine you know uh, biden you know they really are in charge you know Tell me a little bit about that. Tell me, I mean, is that something the White Hats specifically want everyone to follow? Or are they okay with half of us or some of us knowing the actual what's really going on? 
Well, they're, they're, of course, not responsible for who decides which of those two sides of the coin that is chosen. But they do offer two sides of the coin. One for the people who don't look at social media. They don't look at the alternative news. So therefore, the only way to engage with those people is through mainstream media. So you might as well gain control of that and then uh, use that mainstream media to slowly but surely take that large group of people on a journey which is terribly painful for the likes of you and me nick but is probably a breakneck speed for those people and then for the smaller group of uh people who know the truth then giving them uh little bits of insight giving them a little bit of hope giving them uh, a nudge that they're actually on the right path so i see it as one organization producing two different streams of intel so they they do not mind people like me, let's just say, speaking the the very depth of the truth that that sometimes will hamstring their story. You know, when they when they're wanting to come out and say, you know, Hunter Biden's running around alive and well and, and getting ready to be arrested, where whereas I know that's already sort of been here, done that. They don't mind that, so to speak, in your opinion. No, they don't, because the people who watch mainstream news don't watch me or don't watch you. So they don't hear that alternative uh, narrative. All they hear is the mainstream one. So they are ring fencing, as we would say in Great Britain, they're ring fencing two streams of information for specifically targeted audiences. Do they, I see, I don't know if you're going to be able to answer this or not. Do they censor at times if somebody comes on and maybe says some things that might not look very good for the, for the movement, for the, for the cause? No, no they don't. What they, they censor is people who've got software. There was a guy who invented a particular aircraft tracking software mm. for or for the Pentagon. And then after a while, he was allowed to go and use it in the commercial side. Um, and he was following, you know, Air Force One. He was following lots of things. And then he actually got a call from the DOD saying, oh. just stop that. So they will censor where there is um, physical evidence to back up a statement. But if a person makes a statement and we're not able to physically back it up, they don't mind because we can't physically back it up. Let me give you an example. Uh, something just happened the other day. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a real big student of the game. I read everything I can. I listen to who I can. I, I take bits and pieces from everywhere. There was a video put out by, uh, by somebody I respect um, in the cosmic community named Alex Collier. I'm sure you know him. Yes, um, okay. it, was on a, it was on a random platform i didn't know the guy i didn't never heard of him it was small he put out a, a a long video i watched it and it was alex was let's say uh giving the the white hats a bit of a tongue lashing um asking a series of pointed questions you know why is this still going on why are there still people dying why are the med beds still hidden why you know you understand yes and it didn't look so good for the white hats. And when I saw this video, it was just uploaded. No, no, surely, no, you know, a few minutes later, it was removed. And that's happened. I've seen at least two, three, four times when somebody is questioning their motives, the video gets yanked. What do you think about that? Well, I think that's more to do with the bad guys pulling that one because you see, if you look really? right back, to 1985, uh, Alex um, was a much younger man, was one of the first to literally talk about aliens uh, in a way that um, many researchers who at that time, uh, their research was really just designed to produce books. So they would research and they would write a book and they made their name on the back of a number of paperbacks. But Alex actually, uh, who is genuine, has genuine uh, connections with non-human entities. He gave the story as it was. And then he was threatened by the bad guys. This is right back in the 1980s, that if he didn't 
shut up, he would be killed. He took it very seriously and he disappeared off social media for 20 plus years. Mm. And then, mm. then he came back and uh, he broke his agreement with the bad guys. He started to talk about missing children, et cetera, et cetera. And then there was an attempt to kill him. He was you know, bankrupted, all the rest of it. So it, when a person has an engagement uh, with either side, an official engagement, where you sign something or you verbally agree something, they then feel they have the right to censor you or to um, interfere. So because he obviously shut up for 20 plus years and they thought they'd shut him up, when he came back again, uh, they felt this is the bad side. They felt they were able to do that. So whilst I totally agree that the good guys have vast control of social media, they don't have exclusive control of it. Um, and I do have reports that the, the bad guys can still pull videos off. It's just interesting they chose that one because in the way he was speaking, it was almost making the White Hats look a little bit bad um, i think it's about him nick i think it's about him i'll say he, he was a real powerhouse in the 1980s the information he had was genuine it was cutting edge and it frightened the pants off the bad guys and so they just have it in for him so he, even i think even if he'd come out and talked about um pancakes or cookies i think they would I still understand. have taken it down no, I, that that makes total sense. That makes total sense. Um, uh, yeah, and, and I know that you have you have come out a few times, and you have questioned, you know, some of the the methods, some of the the methodology, the the psychology of the plan. Um, yeah. And let let's talk about that. Let let's go a little deeper. Not so much, you know, surface level geopolitical. And I'll tell you what I mean. Trust the plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. It's been it's been going on now since Q came out in 2017 uh, ish, uh, six years. But the White Hats, the Alliance, OK, they know by nature and they know about ascension. They know about the spirituality and the cosmic ingredients here. They know yes. better than we. Yes. Trust the plan intrinsically goes against the very nature of what we're doing here. We're not trusting any unforeseen governmental uh, hierarchical message. The, the, the ascension is free will, it's making the choice. Uh, the people that are ascending or working towards that, they, they do not want to trust a plan. They don't know who wrote it, when it was written, what it says. So it's an interesting dichotomy on that. I'm hoping you could maybe expand on that idea. Sure. The vast majority of patriots are not spiritual. The vast majority of patriots are patriots to the Constitution, to the Minuteman idea, to sovereignty. And to them, trusting the military is trusting the plan. So that message is written to that group of people. Where we talk about spiritual people who may well be patriotic, but generally spiritual people, that is a more loose knit group who question more, who are more interested in where we come from rather than uh, what the interest rate is or uh, what's the second amendment happening, what's happening there. So again, the trust the plan was a message to the uh, idealized vision of patriots in the United States of America. So you believe that the Alliance is very well aware that some of us may not necessarily fully trust any plan um, due to the nature of the, of the, the ascension. Um, I mean, I mean that, that's understandable, yes? Yeah, I, I, I sort of and sort of not. Uh, I think that, that higher beings will expect all individuals who've reached a certain level of development here on earth who have the ability to trust uh, not a plan or an individual but a concept of righteousness in other words uh, if you are uh, 
ascended to yourself or you're a higher vibration, then you you have some very obvious benchmarks. So the, the bottom end is the satanic side, and then the upper end is the side of light. And so we will choose where we want to go. And I think that they're more... Um, they're giving us more more room, to be honest with you, than they are a true patriot or anyone else who is very narrow in their understanding. And I'm not criticizing. Let me make that clear. I'm not criticizing. But someone who's um, studied and experienced some form of enlightenment, a spiritual person, um, they are going to be more rebellious, is what you're saying, to instructions. And Let's be honest, I think that we've all been encouraged to be sovereign. And I understand that as you make the choice. So, no, I don't see the alliance trying to corral us or push us down a particular road. I see it as let's give them lots of apple pie. They can eat that and they will then decide where they want to go. And the ones that make the right choice are perhaps destined for more interesting stuff in the months and years ahead. Mm. Yeah, it just seems like we've done a whole lot of trusting the plan over the last couple thousand years, so to speak. But oh, but no, hang on, no, because the the the, the previous plan came from a completely different group of people. The, the, the last thousands of years, that plan was an evil plan. What we've had recently is is a a DoD white hat plan. But the concept of trusting is interesting because if you look at our history. We've had everyone from Hitler to Stalin. We've had these individuals who act as shepherds to control the sheep. And so it is very hard to take a programmed human race and expect sovereignty from them without education and many years of that development. So I think what the White Hats are doing is saying, we've got to work with what we've got. Let's look at what we've got. Let's move this group to a, a better position and then over the next 20, 25 years, let's educate them. And I think that's their idea. Good. No, I just, I mean, you don't know me that well, but just for on record, I mean, I'm very well, uh, you know, trusting of the plan. The reason being is because I'm able to use my discernment. I'm able to tell who the plan came from, right? But sure. a lot of these questions are, are, are for the people who really struggle there there's a few there's a few there's a few things that the patriots the the viewers still struggle with and one of them is that and one of them is you know what's really real what's really going on I, you know i hear what they're saying but like for instance is putin really in a bunker hiding no i don't think he is of course not <laughs> you know seriously <clears throat> see the if thing he is was that, yeah if on. he was we mm. would not have nearly the control that we really do so for mm. the people who listen to us it is important to know that things like that aren't necessarily true um no he's not you know in the fear bunker hiding and fearing for his life um by any stretch of the imagination so that's kind of the thing i'm talking about some of the stuff is is mm -hmm. not true. Some of it might mm -hmm. have been true a year or two ago. Is that is that the case? Well, I, the thing is with the American people, um, you know, I, one of the biggest questions, just to show you the level of understanding, the biggest question I get asked by faith groups, religious groups, is what is the difference between prayer and meditation? So that's a level of understanding that's very low. Um, and if you, you're trying to show, I don't like the word educate, but if you're trying to show people an aspect that is three floors above where they are actually at at the moment, then you do have to start at a very low level. Um, I mean, we know for a fact that there must be six or seven uh, lookalikes for Putin. Um, and, uh, you know, he's got complete control of the military. The BBC... Uh, that mouthpiece for the bad guys for the last two years in Britain has told us that Putin's about to die of cancer. Putin's about to be completely removed by his own military. Um, Putin's gone completely mad. Uh, and the reality <laughs> is the man is there every day 
holding meetings, doing what he needs to do. And, and part of this is to get people to actually hopefully at some point say, I reject the narrative of mainstream because I am being shown through the mainstream that their message is wrong. And that's the key. So the mainstream give a message, but within that, people are seeing something that's contrary to it because they're not going to come and listen to me. They're not going to listen to you. So that, 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 that media, that mainstream media has to somehow give uh, one message, but also destroy itself. And that's what's occurring. Very good. Very good. Let's talk about something that, 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 that people also struggle a great deal with, even, even the most awake. And that is the whole concept of waking people up. You know, our, our, our friend Charlie says it a lot. You know, it's, it's to wake people up. But that concept in itself, I believe, has to be dissected because there is different levels of waking people up. There's different expectations of waking people up. And Simon, I think you'll agree with me that the majority of the people on the planet at this juncture are not ready in soul progression to actually make this ascension journey. But I believe they can be woke up enough to not cause problems. I'm hoping you can expand a little bit on that. And then I'm going to ask you about something else similar. I would calculate that 20% of people are spiritually awakened and all the rest are not. Um, and that might be quite shocking, but that's what I think is, is the reality. I think we, that must be right. Otherwise, the White Hats would have gone down a completely different route, uh, the route that I would like, which is a little bit faster. Um, so, again, we're dealing with people who have been bred and programmed to do what they're told not to question and the only people that don't are those are portrayed on television as throwing uh, petrol bombs or rocks and that type of peaceful protest has, has disappeared we either have you do what you're told or you riot and unfortunately with the, the january 6th situation that that actually is a question that more people should ask about what the heck that was about but in in in, in view to what you're saying and i think the first part was very powerful that you said, is that there are different levels of awakening. And if you are trying to awaken a patriot, perhaps you only need level one. But if you're trying to awaken somebody who has seen a, um, a non-human flying vehicle, then maybe level one isn't good enough. You've got to go to level two, level three. And, and maybe somebody who has seen something else. What I'm saying is there isn't just one chair that we've all got to go and sit in. There's a whole row of chairs and we need to go and find that chair that, that we feel comfortable in. And if we are in a fair society, then we should all be accepted, providing we hate uh, Satanism, providing we're absolutely against paedophilia. Uh, and then if we're in a good stream of energy, well, let's find where we're comfortable and nobody should consider themselves better than anybody else. But we should consider that we're on different pathways within that, but we have signed up to certain deals that we all can agree on. So that's how I look on it. So would it be safe to say for the viewers that the White Hats don't need to wake the majority up past level one just enough just enough so they can see the problem they can realize that we're working on the solution and not go into some kind of civil unrest is that is that pretty safe to say in your opinion yes but because each next level you want to go to will take between six months and a year so if you wanted to get everyone to where you know many members of of your audience are We'd be here for five years. So that's the constraining element of it. So what they're doing is they're saying there is a minimum that we want to get the majority of people to, and that minimum is a realization that they are paid slaves. And once people realize that they don't actually have the freedom they think they have, that's that's enough because that will generate all the questions, the right questions, 
um, and will develop that change. Uh, the difficulty is that the 20 year olds and younger have been brainwashed in English speaking schools. And there's the problem because we've got older people who are seeing something and beginning to wake up and then younger people who are being told that to question the new, uh, I call it religion, it's not a God religion, the new, the new religion, that's transgender, all the rest of it, uh, is to, to be a very bad person. So we've got a fractured society. And that's the problem. You can't just have one message. You know, I could sit with, with people under 20 years or under 25 years of age, and we would agree on certain things. But as soon as you talk about the, the rights of a transgender person or anything else, they immediately become like that because they have been programmed to do that. Now that's, that we've got to take that very seriously. And that's going to require education. I've often said on my, my talks that when Nazi Germany fell, there was a denazification program that lasted 10 years, 10 years. And what they were doing in those 10 years was undoing Nazism that had been going officially since 1933. Well, on this planet, we've got thousands of years of programming. Thousands of years. You 10-year program is not going to overturn thousands of years, but we've got to start somewhere. Um, and so I'm, I'm and sadly, that is why the White Hats have quite correctly, but sadly, chosen this way because it's very slow and painful hmm. yeah I, I definitely agree so let's let's follow that line of thought the the denazification because it's it's a very a very important uh topic right here right now you know the whole idea the, the what, what was talked about after world war ii we got to look at this so this never happens again so this never happens again the Holocaust, well, it never quit happening. Um, I had a, I had one of my dear friends, uh, Laura Eisenhower, on our show a few a few days ago, and we we did a little bit of a dive into World War II and what really took place behind the scenes that most don't really know. And you know, it, it was interesting. I was watching some some History Channel and um, the things that started going on. I, I know Simon that you're a a bit of a World War II buff, um, you know a lot about it. Uh, early 1945, um, you know, during the during the time when when Nazi Germany was faltering greatly. Um, I mean, I believe I believe that Hitler very well could have had a clone come in. Um, you know, I, I'm very familiar with uh, the, the 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 Nazi war machine leaving Germany prior to the end and going down to Argentina as well as Antarctica, um, taking, I mean, you know, look, look, I mean, who shows up for the Nuremberg trials, right? I mean, they, the only, the only known, really known person is Goebbels. I mean, all of the, uh, yeah. all of the, the Nazis, very not, few not, actually not, not showed Goebbels. up. Not Goebbels. Goebbels was, uh, Hermann Goebbels was at the trials. Um, Hermann Goering, you mean Goering. Goring, Goring, Not sorry, Gore, Gore, right. and uh, I believe Hannah, you were just Hannah. you were just testing you were just testing me, Nick. I know. I think Hess was there, um, and I think uh, Albert Speer was there. Was was a Hitler arch architect? But everybody else, oh well, they they committed suicide, so they they can't come. You know what what is what is your feeling in that in that regard? I mean, in regards to things that that Laura and I were talking about. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, the Nazis had a lot of stuff going on in the 30s in, 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 in Antarctica way prior to the war. Yeah, well, I, I've spoken not recently for a number of years, but I have spoken to Laura Eisenhower. And, um, you know, she's very, uh, a very principled woman, very driven, um, understands literally uh, from Von Braun, you know, the, the, the concept that the CIA took. So, you know, I, I've got a great deal of respect for her. The, the, the key really was that uh, an off-planet entity force had an agreement with Hitler. And you, you'll know, maybe the audience won't know, but it's illegal for a, an advanced civilization to gift 
technologies to a weaker civilization. So they have to stage crashes so that it it, it breaks that, that that deal. And so 1933, they got a, a craft down in the Black Forest, which uh, the SS were given and um, the German scientists took apart and had a look. And the difficulty there, of course, was that um, they didn't look on it as a weapon. They looked on it as a as a, a power plant. And when Hitler broke from his agreement in 1941, then in the south southern states of America, another uh, alien craft was crashed. I can't was it Alabama. I can't remember now. 1941, and that technology was given to the Americans, and they this time looked on the cold fusion reactor as a bomb. And so one of the, the drawbacks, I think, is that when you've got a puppet master playing uh, more primitive races, then uh, you don't tend to see who's behind, you know, as in The Wizard of Oz, you don't see who's behind the curtain. You just focus on, on what have you. Um, and I know, for fact, from my own background, from my own mother, who was you know, working for the, the National Security Agency and my grandfather who worked for the CIA, um, that when the Americans predominantly came through Germany in March and April, the technology they found, which they never, even to this day, have been open with, shot the pants off them. They were absolutely shocked. And what they said was, America must now be the only country on the planet to speak for the planet. It must be the only country that can control everything. We can't let anyone else uh, have this. And so a deal was done with Hitler. Uh, Hitler didn't die in the bunker. Um, whether it was a clone or a lookalike, that I don't know. But I know for a fact he didn't. Um, and I also know that in the submarine that he escaped in, all the torpedoes were taken out and it was filled with gold and treasures. Even all the loos, the toilets, uh, the Johns, um, which... You, the U-boat commanders would normally put the, the German sausages in and all the meat because they just store all the food. That was all taken out and just all treasure put in there because he needed to bribe uh, the Perons when he got to Argentina. Mm. So the American, the top brass knew this, but the deal was this, and this is what your audience won't know. Hitler had an ace card up his sleeve. And... What it was, was as the Americans approached, he put SS guards into every research establishment in Germany. And the order was, when the Americans come within one mile, you shoot all of the scientists. Now, America needed these scientists to be top of the game. So his was his card. I won't shoot the scientists. They can walk to you. You let me go. And that was the deal that was done. Really? Wow. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's it's just very important for people to know, you know, how all this is, why all this is happening, and and you know, from, uh, you know, from the, you know, it's my belief through research that the alien influence, the reptilians in Antarctica, got the Germans to agree to need to, to lose the war publicly, to lose the war, but not really lose the war per se. Uh, because it was important for their their mission to, to actually infiltrate the United States from within uh, under the guise of we lost the war, you guys are great, you know, and it, which led to paperclip, or excuse me, which led to, uh, you know, project um, um, uh, high jump. 47, which led to, you know, paperclip about the same time, 46, 47, where, where more Nazis were brought over than advertised. Um, you know, they infiltrated uh, our military, all of our corporations, you know, politics, you name it. Um, so basically, Germany claimed to have lost the war. But what really happened is they just moved over here moved to Antarctica and to South America. Um, and the Third Reich continued. Um, and, and what was interesting, talk to us a little bit about the, I believe, 1952 flyover and the unconditional surrender that our that the United States was forced into. 
Uh, I am not as critical of the president as many people are. If an individual who is tasked with the, the, the life of people in the 50 states is shown an enemy who is vastly superior, uh, your only game plan is to buy time. And that's exactly what they did. They bought time. They went to agreements they could, but they were always trying to get back engineered technology. And it wasn't until 19, the 1980s under Reagan that they finally had caught up with the technology. The, the scientists, German scientists in, in, in America uh, had the concept, but it's what my mother was working before she mm. died. The uh, software and the computing capability at, at that time wasn't there. So they had the hardware, they had the concept, but the computing elements were not capable to match it. Now, when that happened under the Reagan era, they suddenly then took a huge leap. Uh, and that particularly was with directed energy weapons, which didn't have the targeting before Reagan, but did afterwards. And then suddenly they were bringing down alien craft left, right and centre. So what, what happened is that the, that the president in the early 50s uh, and 40s, actually, because they were well aware before Roswell, was that the generals sat around, and remember that the United States Navy has always played a key role until the, until the Bushes, um, and said, we've got to buy time so we can figure these guys out. And that's exactly what they did. And that's been proved to be right, because if they'd taken on these forces in the 50s, I don't, I, it doesn't bear thinking about. So they, they played the right game. People see it as selling out and being as a coward. No, they didn't. They, they did the only thing they could do, which is go into agreements, do swaps, do exchanges, and year by year, gain technology, gain ideas. And that's exactly what they did. And today, um, Britain, America, to a lesser extent, Australia, have technology now, which uh, ensures that the earth is uh, relatively protected, relatively protected. So Solar Warden, for instance, you know, that, that, that's a good example of it. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's fascinating to me, the, the, the massive amount of things that's really going on that 95% of the population hasn't a clue. Um, the technology, the, the, the interactions that are taking place every day in and uh, off planet, you know, the, the commerce, the, 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 the habitation of other planets, other moons, meteors, you know, the, 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 it's absolutely amazing to me. I mean, you know, for, I, I don't know how much you follow um, some of the, the recent talkings of Dr. Sala in regards to the, the missions of JP, the missions in regards to the multiple uh, arcs, they call them, um, that are hidden, buried, uh, different strategic places on the planet and or the moon and or Mars, um, massive ancient uh, extraterrestrial libraries, um, civilizations that are currently living on the surface, how do I say, on the, on the, the surface of the ocean floor in mm -hmm. bubble cities, um, mm -hmm. different civilizations that live amongst us inside the planet. The planet is more of a, it's more of a honeycomb um, than people really understand. There's a great deal going on there more than just deep underground bases. I mean, most people in the, in the know here, we know about the deep underground bases, but that's just scratching the surface. Um, you know, I was hoping, Simon, maybe you could shed a little light on some of those, some of those things taking place just today. Um, you know, I, I heard about a mission where there's, there's many space ports, let's just say in the United States, and they're usually in mountainous regions, and they normally have some sort of large rock stone face door, ships go in and out constantly um, from many different civilizations, 
and they have been for a very long time. They've got cloaking technology. Um, you know, this goes on. This has been going on for for ages. Well, I may not seem to be answering your question, but here's the problem. On the, that side, which I totally agree with, on the other side, you've got um, city councils saying they can't afford to repair a hole in the road. <laughs> you've got um, situations where we're told that if an extra million bucks uh, is found or a million pounds or euros is found for a hospital and everybody applauds and claps. The reality is that this is the the poverty of not just the information, but of the the life of humans. We did not come to this earth to live as slaves, but that's the way we are. Uh, the, the real concept of being human is the most wonderful creature connected to God that should be able to thrive and create. And that's not how we're being allowed because the, the, the deep state don't want a lot of free thinking people. So how can you easily bring this, the message you've just said to somebody who still thinks there isn't enough money to, to fill up a pothole? We saw Arnold Schwarzenegger filling up a hole in his local road because for two weeks, three weeks, the local municipality wouldn't do it. Now, that's the level that we are at. How can you say to somebody, there's a portal up there, Mount Shasta, for instance, there's a portal there, spaceships coming in and out. This is the problem. This is the difficulty. And, and, and I'll be, again, honest with you and the audience. If you were to tell the truth officially, the amount of suicides amongst the unawake people would be enormous. You know yourself from your own history that uh, when H.G. Wells, the, the, the War of the Worlds was put out, Orson Wells did a radio broadcast and it was done deliberately to see how American audience would react. And they just took their shotguns if they were in the farm, uh, their bore guns, they took their other arm and hid under the table. And so what was shown was that back in the 30s, obviously, there was no way. And that hasn't changed because there's been no real education program. Just because you show Star Trek on a repeat run doesn't mean you educate the public because the public will say that's science fiction. Mm -hmm. so this is the problem. You know, we're trying, we're trying to get people to get head around the fact that the 2020 election was not fair and free. And that's the battle, not um, this, that, and the other. And that's the problem. Once, once everything's been done, then I think that we really need in schools, part of the curriculum, the real history of this earth to be taught. Um, but you've got to sit down with religious leaders, all the different faiths, because you're going to upset a load of people. We need to get them together. We need to get the missing pages, books from the Bible, from the Quran, um, from 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 the, the Jewish texts. And then you've got to get some arrangement and agreement with all these heads of, of these faith groups. This is the difficulty that people don't understand. You can't, this isn't the military, you can't ride a tank through it. You actually have to do it with people. And that's what takes time. I was trying to come back in on the right moment, but it's such a, interesting conversation i was like okay now 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 couldn't get back in um you're completely right about that though simon re-educating the entire school system is going to be a hell of a task yeah you're better off just i don't know it, one like one of those devices off men in black where you could just erase people's memory <laughs> no no that's not free will that's <laughs> not free will we can't do that you can't Good do point. that but we we have to we have to do it um over 50 years 50 years because you've got to get the next generation up and they've then got to bring theirs up because at the moment you, you those of us who, who've been family 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 men here um when your kid brings you something uh from mathematics and you look at it and think well i don't understand any of that <laughs> but they do and that's the problem that the the, the division 
between older people, 40s and upwards, 30s and 40s, and the younger people is so vast that you've got to do both. You've got to educate the, the parents and you've got to educate the children. You can't run one separately from the other. This is why it needs to be a, a universal program. You, you, something I've noticed about that, though, Simon, I don't actually know what the answer is. Okay. What you just said about older people not understanding mathematics, um, it could actually be that you they, they teach it slightly different. And also, you've forgotten how to do it because it's so long ago and since you've been there. But then if you go back to a kid, give them a remote control, you know, I've seen kids go to three different places and it, it just pick up the remote. They've never seen it before and they've got it figured out within minutes. That internal intelligence that children possess, like iPhones now, you know, I saw my, my, my friend's daughter going up to my TV screen trying to swipe it. <laughs> you yeah, know, Mah Mahoney, the, the point is that this was, uh, was not a good, good cause. When computer games were created in the 1980s, but it took off in the 90s with the software mm -hmm. programs of machines were able to work with them, it was taking youngsters away from the family setup. Yeah, playing away out. from that, and, um, yeah. sitting around the table, talking yeah. to, to mum and mum and dad. Um, but it, what it did was it got them into that technological stream, so that when you did hand them something technological, they weren't frightened of it. Now, mm -hmm. an older person, I'll include myself here. I've had to learn it, but but children who've grown up with it, it's not that they're more technologically minded. It's that they understand the guys who wrote these programs. They are understanding those programs because they have been brainwashed into that. Those of us who are more organic, like I would much rather look at a tree. I would much rather look at a running river than, than what have you. Yeah. It is alien to us because we haven't been infected with AI in the same uh, way that these youngsters have. Now, are they it, downloading it, you think, though, Simon? Are they getting downloads that they're not... Well, they tried that with a number of software programs. There was a program about five or six years ago where it went viral. All the kids had it on their phones. You would walk around your neighbourhood and you would try to detect one of these um, little creatures or oh. on AI, something like that, that was supposed to be behind this tree or here. Yeah. That is an attempt to program kids. That's what they were trying to do. So um, what I'm saying to you is that, that, yes, we have to move because we've had this technology forced on us. And, and the technology we have here, I can tell you, is not the same technology that it's been um, back engineered for. This, this technology here is primitive. Now, lots of people are going to say, Simon, you're talking rubbish. And that's, that's your opinion. But where I've seen is you think it and it happens. You don't have to physically touch. You think it, it happens. That's, mm -hmm. that's the technology that exists. And the secret space program have that. And they tried this 20 years ago with what they call the thinking helmet. And it was F-16 fighter pilots um, who tried it. And it could have been the F-18 as well. Is that you put the helmet on and you didn't have to press a fire button. When you wanted to launch a missile, you'd just say fire. The problem was humans are so undisciplined that the thinking helmet was thinking, was doing the thinking and the plane was going all over the place. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that the technology we have is not safe. It is not safe. And it was in 1968 when Bell Labs put all of their telephone exchanges together on one of the first AI programs. And the damn thing, like in Arnold Schwarzenegger's film, it became self-aware. Took over. So, yeah. So. I'm, I'm, I'm very cautious of technology as it's been given to us, mm -hmm. not the, the true sense of it. Um, let me throw something else in there for the mix. I was watching a story yesterday on one of these channels, and it was about a guy that was in Vietnam. So he'll be in his 70s now. And he said at the start of the Vietnam War, he was in, he was, uh, in the air corps. He was in the Huey helicopters flying around. And at the start of it, they gave him these special night vision glasses, but they weren't like the, the ones they have today, which are green. He said they were red. Yeah, red. They were red. You because they were that. back engine. Well, they were back engineered from alien uh, technology. 
that's where what? they came from. In fact, the Germans were the very first. They had night vision um, goggles, but what they actually had was infrared lamps on their tiger tanks uh, for nighttime and their goggles, and they were able to hit Russian tanks before the Russians even knew where they were there. But that was a technology that was back engineered from materials they had they've got. Well, this guy was saying, Simon, that was something called the Lucifer effect. But a yes, lot of the guys right. sitting in helicopters right. were right. seeing right. demons. Yes. They were because... seeing winged, terrifying demon creatures in a yeah. different dimension. And yeah. they immediately withdrew them. And the pilots were told, never wear these goggles. Yep. Only give them to the gunners. Yep. And they withdrew them and then never put them back on the market again or in service this again. Is absolutely correct. Because you see in Great Britain, most of the uh, fake crop circles were being created by exactly those same creatures. And the the Royal Air Force were having a struggling time trying to identify them. And uh, by using uh, forward infrared uh, radar vision, um, they were able to, to see these entities and put a stop to it. So some of these creatures they exude, they give out a frequency which our eyes cannot see. Anybody who sees a spacecraft, you're meant to see it because normally they are in the infrared spectrum deliberately. They charge the particles of the, the spacecraft so that it goes into that spectrum so we can't see it. So anybody who says to you, I saw, I genuinely saw a spacecraft, they were meant to see it because they turned off what That's Nick true. calls the cloaking device. So, <clears throat> But yeah, that, that's why that's why the Germans were so advanced. But the difference was the Germans being very methodical people. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five didn't make a jump from five to twelve. You see, so they were looking at their technologies like that. But if they'd made a jump to twelve, they could easily have won the war because they would have taken a piece of back-engineered technology and enhanced it. But, but German people are very, very careful and very cautious, and they would do that. What the Americans did was, who are a bit more free-thinking, and I'm not, not being disrespectful, it's just the way cultures are, and they just took all this, and they said, oh, that's a bomb. Oh, that's a bomb. Mm. Of course it's a bomb. And that's how they dropped two bombs on Japan, because they didn't go, let's do this, let's do that. They just said, oh, it's a bomb. And so that's why the Germans got outthought, because they are very, very um, practical people. And that's why the Americans... Got, got the atomic bomb, and the Germans did not. There was a Japanese guy that was in both Hiroshima and Nagasaki talk about being unlucky in both cities when they were bombed. But he, did <laughs> he live? Did he, he live? Lived, yeah, he lived. And he, wasn't, he was not unlucky. <laughs> that was lucky. incredibly lucky. <laughs> well, hold, Can you imagine hold that? Hold on, gentlemen. Back up one step. Yeah. Simon, what were those creatures? Why have I not heard of this? What, I thought you'd like what, that. What were those things people were seeing? Tell me about this. What were they? Uh, which which ones? Which, which ones? The, you the, the infrared, the flying creatures. Ah, well, the, the, the point is that most of those entities are able, uh, if they wear the right suit, to actually charge that light frequency with them. So greys, standard greys, clone greys, uh, wear a suit. And that will can change. Now, the, the entity ones are very interesting because they were not uh, what we would call um, an entity. They are demons. Yeah. The true version of demons, demonic entities that exist in really? the lower, lower fourth yeah. dimension, but are able to leak through into our reality. Um, but they are not of a physical form. They are a pure energy form. And they are what what in the Bible would be you'd call fallen angels or or the, or the bad guys. They are literally demonic forces. The description in the video, Nick, was large winged, terrifying creatures that you'd see sitting on top of churches. Exactly what you'd see. Well, we call biblical the drawings and paintings from the the yeah. Art Renaissance period. And these nineteen year old kids from inner city um, ghettos, you know, they always dragged. The, uh, the jails and the uneducated to put them as gunners, they were just shooting at them because it's it's not really anything in our entity form. And they were sending the helicopter gunships, the um, the formation that they'd made were on an attack pattern into complete disarray. And what the hell are you shooting at? And it was it was multiple reports, and it was the start of the uh, the war. And they took them 
they took them out of service very quickly and the pilots were told never to wear them. It was only the gunners really and, and the, the, some of the other crew. But yeah, typical winged demons that you'd see on those old, you know, Dante's Inferno stuff. Yeah, like gargoyles, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know what? Before we run out of time, Mahoney, I've got to throw this at Simon. Sure, go. Um, I, I've got to, I've got to ask him. Uh, Simon, I've been, I've been researching and following cryptozoology for many years, and in the last two or three, um, I, I can't get this out of my head, man. I can't get it. There, there's some connection I have with these, with these creatures, with these dogmen, with these werewolves. Um, you know, um, uh, I've, I've heard thousands and thousands of stories over these years. They're all identical. They're all describing them exactly the same. I've talked to park rangers who only talk off the record. I've talked to researchers. You know, I've talked to uh, people who have seen them. What the hell is going on here? What do you know about these bipedal dog wolf men, seven, eight feet tall, you know, 800 pounds. They can run the hundred yard dash in three seconds. Do you have any knowledge or background knowledge on these creatures? Yes. So the interesting thing you said was that you have a connection. So I would then ask you a question. What is your connection? I, I am answering your question, Nick. So just humor me. He What's looks like one, doesn't he? With all that hair and beard. Oh. <laughs> and you live in the woods. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mo. Hey, I didn't oh. wear a hat for you, Moni. <laughs> Dear Sorry God. to jump in with that quip. That's all right. I'm used to you. <laughs> um, what's your connection, Nick, either to the official line or any individual of the United States Navy? Or the what's Marines? my connection to the Navy yeah. in any way? Yeah. Yes. None? Other than my uncle was in the Navy when he was a kid, none. Right, but nothing at all. So you don't have any good friend who's a Marine? No. Oh, a, a Marine? Yes, um, Marine. I had one guy back 10, 15 years ago. Not, not, nothing really, though. I and how long, how long did you know him for? Five years, six years, seven years? Yeah, as a matter of fact, seven or eight years, yeah. Yeah, I know, I know you did. <laughs> right, I'll I, explain. What? Yeah, I'm intrigued now. I'll explain. Well, that's why I am. Okay. Um, Everybody I'm listen talking. close, because I don't so, know what he's talking right. about. So the United States Navy contracted uh, the, the dog creatures. They're very good with scimitars. They have swords. Very, very good. They use a scimitar type sword. They absolutely hate the reptilians. They've been fighting the reptilians for years. The United States Navy is a good force. They're good guys. And right. they actually have contracted with these dog-like beings um, because the dog-like beings are anti-reptilian. So you said to me just now, I have a connection with these creatures, right? So therefore, you must have had a connection with somebody from the Navy, more likely the Marines, who would you have known for about five or six or seven years for you to have a connection which you do not know anything about? Hmm. Okay, that's your answer. <laughs> well, but what is, I don't, okay. I don't understand what the connection with that guy has anything to do because I've always thought it was through prior life, you know. Uh, well, yes, I've but had yes, a... but they yes, it is. But you need to be activated in this lifetime, and oh. not everyone, not everybody, can activate themselves to reconnect to what they once were or once they were involved with. Sometimes we have to come into connection with somebody who is deliberately put in our path because we have not achieved what we supposed to have achieved at the set time and therefore they have to push us along a little bit and they will then you'll bump into people as it seems by happenstance but the reality it is not happenstance it is all planned and organized but this amazing the, the question that nick because uh, we talked about this last time i think is they've had such a bad reputation for attacking the public the park rangers are terrified. They're told to be quiet. They found uh, dismembered body parts. There was a report of um, Border Patrol watching a, um, a group of Mexicans crossing the border when this group were attacked by one, Simon, and they were torn into bits, torn to pieces. They seemed to be very aggressive. If they were originally trained and bred and 
however you want to say, created for a protectional guarding. No, I didn't. I didn't say that. If you if you go <clears throat> into a forest uh, or a woodland or somewhere, let's say we go to Africa and we meet a tribe of lions, and let's say we can speak lion tongue, we can make an arrangement with them. But if we bring those lions and we put them into cages and they escape, they will attack anyone. So it's like a reservation. These beings are on a reservation. It is theirs and they've been told they can do what they want and they are above the law and they are. And then what will happen is the authorities will go in and say, we need 20 of you. We've got a mission. We've got a deep underground base. We've got something there we can't handle. We need 20 of you. We need you to do it. And that but is Simon, the, is this is this good guys or bad guys, man? Is this black ops or is this oh, you know what guys. I mean? No, it's good huh? guys because it's good. good guys because these dog creatures hate the reptilians. That's the link. That's the key. Uh, anybody who has fought many, many wars against the reptilians understands the danger. And you can then uh, sit down to see if you can make some sort of arrangement or agreement. Because even if you can't, if you can bring them to a independent position, you stop them moving to the other side. And all of this um, shenanigans at the moment is about who's on the good side, who's on the bad side, who's in the middle, who is moving one way or the other. Um, and sometimes you've got to, you got to give the, the number of non, non-humans who've been taken to Nevada to play to play the roulette wheels to to play the machines a number of shopping trips that that these creatures have been dressed up and, and all the rest of it is is you know people just wouldn't believe it um, but it's it's normal because the arrangement that's had is this is a really interesting planet and these people want to come here almost like a vacation they want to be shown around and and that's the deal and, and this guy shocking shocking to most people but it's the truth well i think i think it's it's a normal that's a not normal sort of a curiosity of any creature really you know if you're going to go on vacation yeah. if you get locked into the resort you're always trying to find a way out so you can go and sample the local food and and rum <laughs> dominican republic is a classic example don't go out to the hotel <laughs> i'm gonna to have to go now guys because yeah. um got a few bits to nick up. it's been really lovely to meet you if, it's you. it's truly been my pleasure, Simon. Um, you know, I've got I've got like ten episodes worth of worth of material. I think I would love to do it again if you would be so gracious. Of course, and, uh, of course. Happy thank to you for so. your well, thank Nick, you Nick, your Nick, Nick, you're a good guy. You're a, you're a good guy who um, I'm not saying you're under pressure, but you've got a lot of people who have genuine questions, and and I agree with you. People don't want to be uh, pasted over. They don't want to be, they want to be taken seriously. They need those questions answered because a lot of commentators are not prepared to answer these questions because they can't. They just mouth off what they're told and there's no substance behind it. And I know, Nick, what you're trying to do is to say to people, there's a reason why. And, and we don't take our audience for granted. People who take an audience for granted end up with no ratings. If we listen to our audience, we try to support our audience and we ask super intelligent questions, then they will respect that. And, and that's why I'm doing it with you, Nick, because you respect your audience uh, and you want the best for them. And that means, you know, trying to get the truth. And so, you know, and, 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 and Mahoney is exactly the same. That's why this is this is hopefully this will be a very successful podcast. I hope people love it. Oh, I think it will. I was and listening while I was on the other line. Send me the link so I can stick it on I my will. site, please. Thank Simon, you. thank you, buddy. Great to thank see you again. I'll bless see you very soon. God and, bless to everybody. Uh, stay on Nick a little bit, Simon. Sure. God bless. Bye bye. How was that, Nick? Did, oh. you get, did you get most of your questions answered? I was listening while I was doing the other thing. Oh my God, dude. I I I uh I almost I got my Simon fix. Yeah, you know what? I, I've got I've got pages and pages of them. I just <laughs> over the last couple of days they just kept coming. So I got well, some of the good ones out of the way. And and you know, th there's for anybody anybody out there that has any questions whether or not Simon is the real deal. You know, you, you got to take it from Mahoney and I. There is no more real deal 
than that gentleman there. You know, um, sometimes, you know, people that have great knowledge, great wisdom, great experiences aren't like everybody else. Yeah, don't yeah. expect that. Um, but, you know, the guy is, is unbelievable. And I really appreciate his time and you putting it together as well. We'll set it up again. I'd like to stay on next time, Nick, but um, we'll get you back on next week doing something next Thursday, no doubt. And until then, keep your research going because the stuff that you're coming up with, buddy. Yeah. Give me one thing. Um, I would love for your, for your followers and Simons to visit me and my buddy, Dylan, um, on our brand new channel. This is the stuff we talk about sure. and even deeper. It's called The Bridge with Nick and Dylan on Rumble. So we'll I'd love for you below. guys to join us. We'll put the link below, Nick, as well, um, and we'll get it out there and get driving traffic because you, the topics that you cover are very intense. I'll try to find those that, that infrared video and send it to you because that's a really good one. Um, demon goggles. And um, wow. we'll see you next week. Folks, I hope you enjoyed Bye. the show. It's a very... Um, interesting chat with Simon as always. He's you can throw a dart at the board and he knows to talk about any subject you can throw at him. And Nick's always got great questions. Keep your research going, Nick. I look forward to talking to you very soon, buddy. And we'll see you it's later. All right, brother. Thanks a lot. See you, my friend.